honesty, passion, experience. It's Timberwolves Explosion, hosted on the SportsStuff.com and also brought to you by the Oddman Media Network. Here are your hosts, Paladino Joey and Marcus the Forecaster. Hello again, Timberwolves fans. Are you ready for the explosion of Timberwolves basketball? I'm your host, Paladino Joey, or Joey Awajan. Timberwolves Explosion is available on the sportstuff.com and on iTunes. I thank each and every one of you always for downloading and listening to this show. I'm back once again. This will probably be the last episode before the quote unquote famous State of the Timberwolves, as we do that every year annually. I was told uh, a few weeks back, maybe even a month ago already, that uh, Hank McCoy and Vince Germano would uh, like to be on board. This would be Hank McCoy's second consecutive uh, State of the Timberwolves. And uh, maybe Vince Germano jumping on on board as well. Wouldn't that be fantastic? So it would be courtside and Timberwolves explosion kind of going in at, going in one show. State of the Timberwolves 2015 will most likely be the next episode unless there's for some reason i got to jump in one more time. But, of course, it's just about June. In fact, it's the very last day of May. So, just kind of keeping up with things. Want to keep uh, talking about the uh, the draft and such. Also, the fact that the... Well, we're, we're now in the NBA Finals. That'll be segment number two. We'll kind of talk about how we got there and my brief preview on that series. And, of course, the fan interaction. So, just kind of keeping up with things. And the fact that the Bulls have the number one pick in the draft. Might as well keep these coming as well. Just, why not? You know, <laughs> I just want to keep talking about thought stuff, and I do think that I missed some things that I should have talked about on the last episode. That's another reason why I'm back again this week, the last, uh, on the last day of May, May 31st. Usually I don't say the date, but sometimes I throw it out there. It just kind of is what it is. Well, Minnesota Timberwolves, as we know, have the number one pick in the draft. The Los Angeles Lakers have the number two pick in the draft. And me and Vince Germano talked about that on the Showtime and T-Wolves show, so do check that out if you could. Here from uh, the Wolves and the Lakers' points of view uh, for this upcoming draft and, and such. Another just NBA conversation and fun banter back and forth between me and Vince Germano. Well, are, are the Timberwolves going to take Carl Anthony Towns or really is it going to be Jalil Okafer? Some of the experts out there on CBSSports.com, well, two out of three picked, uh, said the Wolves will be taking Jalil Okafer. So I'm going to go with that really quick here. Gary Parrish of CBSSports.com as the Wolves taking Jaleel Okafer. How about that? He was saying it might be true that if Towns is a better fit with Minnesota's current roster, it might be true. Yeah, but but this is also true. I don't care because because the goal with the first pick should always be to take the best long-term prospect regardless of position or need or style. And in my opinion, that's Okafer. And in my opinion, that's always been Okafer. He was the number one prospect in high school before becoming the best player on a college team that won the national championship. He has unbelievable hands and incredible feet. I see no reason, quotation marks, other than, <laughs> excuse me, parentheses, other than bad luck with injuries, that Okafer won't become a franchise big. And I certainly hope so. I certainly hope so. Uh, Gary Parrish over there at CBSSports.com. I'm going to hear two other opinions from Zach Harper and Sam Vin- Vincenny. I don't know if I'm saying it right, and I do apologize for that. Vincenny. And, of course, he has the Lakers taking Towns here, that being Gary Parrish taking Towns, D'Angelo Russell going to the Sixers. So, basically, it's just a flip-flop with the top two here, according to, to other mock drafts. <sighs> well, we're just going to have to wait and see where things go with <laughs> if, if uh, Gary's right on that one. But it's interesting, and... Before I jump into Zach Harper's uh, opinion, I will uh, say that this could sound th- this could go the way things went with uh, Andrew Wiggins last season with the Cleveland Cavaliers and ultimately becoming a Minnesota Timberwolf and all that good stuff. The good news is we're not going to be trading our number one pick for some guy because well, it's not like we're primed to win a championship immediately with a uh, the number one player in basketball signing a contract coming home, so to speak. Kevin Garnett's a little too old, and of course he never really was quite the best player in the world, maybe for about a year there, back in 04. But, again, I digress. Um, the situation here could be, again, like Andrew Wiggins last year, most people were saying, you know what, Jabari Parker should be the number one guy. It's got to it's be Jabari Parker, including Marcus the Forecaster was on Jabari Parker, who in a lot of ways you could say, well, 
is kind of like this year's Carl Anthony Towns, or well, last year's Carl Anthony Towns, I would say, the guy who kind of shot up and kind of passed everybody, and the excitement was more on him and all that. Now, nobody saw Jabari Parker carrying his ACL, and that's very, very unfortunate with what happened to the Milwaukee Bucks. So, very small sample size to say who truly is the better player out of those two, but of course, Andrew Wiggins with the, well, a head start due to that injury, unfortunately for Jabari Parker. We'll see where things turn out, but Andrew Wiggins did turn out very, very nice, very well, and he looks like he's going to be a star in this league. Could it be the same situation with Jalil Okafor? Yeah, it could be. It could be. And, well, for a while there, I was on Jaleel Okafor. Right now, I'm still leading Carl Anthony Towns, but this does make me feel confident that if the Wolves do go with Jaleel Okafor, that there's no reason to really, like, start <laughs> vomiting on my breakfast or choking myself or whatever it is. You know, having, having my tongue go down my throat and I choke to death on it because, oh my God, they just blew it. Not necessarily. Because, again... Who was the guy we heard about constantly, and I mean constantly, the last year or two years going into this draft? That guy's name was Jalil Okafor. In in the previous case, you heard the, well, the Wiggins sweepstakes, the wallow for Wiggins, all that. A a good year, year and a half to two years before the 2014 draft. So a lot of times a guy is looked on as like a, you know, can't miss superstar of the future for a reason. It's not just a bunch of BS and then all of a sudden, oh yeah, he was... eh, you know, this other guy is going to be better. So, at the end of the day, I do think both of these guys will have very, very productive careers. You just hope and pray that we end up with the right one for the second year in a row, hopefully. Again, again, small sample size with Parker. We'll see where things go with that. Zach Harper. Okay. Zach Harper. I'm going to read some of the, what he said early on, too. He says, the Minnesota Generals have won the won the lottery with the top pick, but the Los Angeles Lakers also win jumping to the second pick. Yeah, and that's very true. So, We'll just leave it there. His uh, comment's a bit smaller here. He has, again, Minnesota taking Jalil Okafor, number one overall. He says the Timberwolves win the draft lottery, and they end and they get to end up with Flip Saunders' favorite prospect in the draft with Jalil Okafor. He'd be the big man to compliment Andrew Wiggins in this latest rebuild. Let's see what they say. Let's see what he says about Carl Anthony Towns. He says the Lakers really win this draft by taking the big man the Wolves don't take here, putting Carl Anthony Towns next to Julius Randle, is a brilliant start to the rebuilding process. Uh, I don't like what I I don't like what I'm reading there pretty much because think about it. What did he say here? The Lakers really win this draft by taking the big man the Wolves don't take here. What was my greatest fear <laughs> last week and and such? Yeah, that's what my greatest fear was. The Wolves passed on the better player. Will that be the case? Mm. Huh. <laughs> huh. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. Uh, Carol Anthony Towns, some people believe his ceiling is higher. Okafer is polished and ready to rock and roll, but is Carl Anthony Towns' ceiling higher? I tend to agree at this point. I tend to agree. I don't like uh, Okafer's defense. I don't like his free throw shooting. I like what Carl Anthony Towns brings to the table a little more than Jalil, o- Jalil Okafer, but at the same time, again, like I was rehashing earlier, Andrew Wiggins turned out to be pretty damn good when he was that number one prospect for a good good year and a half, two years before Parker potentially passed him up in the draft. And ultimately he didn't. Cleveland said, you know what? Wiggins should be the guy anyway. And maybe the Wolves go that way with Jalil Okafor. Okay, Sam Vincenny. Vincenny. Sounds like he might be related to Vince Germano. Okay, that's bad. He's going to kick my ass now. (laughs) Bloody hell, Joey. Okay. He goes with number one overall pick to the Minnesota Timberwolves, Carl Anthony Towns. <laughs> Carl Anthony Towns, I love that. The Timberwolves are the are the lucky team that will get their pick of the top guys. I still believe that Carl Anthony Towns and Julie Lokofer are 1A and 1B in this draft class. However, Towns is the pick for the Wolves, in my opinion. The two players are close enough that you can take the player who fits your team. And for the Wolves, I like the versatility of Towns. He's physical enough to get a bucket in the paint. Yep, I like that part. But also skilled enough to stretch the floor with a solid jump shot. That ability to stretch the floor is a big reason why he makes more sense for them. As Towns has the potential to keep the paint open for Ricky Rubio and Andrew Wiggins. Yep, which will be essential to their offensive success. The Wolves are also in need of a rim-protecting center. <laughs> and Towns likely provi- uh, profiles a better a bit better in that regard than Okafor if he can fix his foul issues. So, yeah, okay, 
Towns being a little bit too aggressive or he could foul out. And, well, you know, that happens with the young guys. I mean, <laughs> that pretty much happens with everybody coming into the NBA. And it even happens in college when you're just a freshman like uh, Carl Anthony Towns and Okafor were. Yes, Okafor is more ready and all that good stuff. Mm-mm. So, it depends on fit. It depends on the better player. The good news is, odds are, both of these guys will make an all-star team at least once in their career, I do believe, barring some type of stupid bullcrap injury like what happened to Greg Oden, which was more of a degenerative situation, ultimately, rather than just injuries. It kind of snowballed into what it became <laughs> in that case. Uh, one other note here, before I forget to get it to get it out there, there was talk that Jalil Okafor wanted to go number two in the draft, and that he highly prefers the Lakers. But then he says, wait, but then he said, whoa, 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 whoa. He came back and said, oh, I'm, yeah, he came back and said, that, I, I made that quote before, <laughs> before the draft lottery took place. So it's not related to the fact that the Lakers went number two overall. He just merely meant, maybe I should just go, maybe I should go number two overall, regardless of who winds up there. And that maybe Carl Anthony Towns deserves to be number one overall. Hmm. Not sure what to make of that, but ultimately, I guess, hopefully, Jalil Okafor would be honored to come to the Minnesota Timberwolves. Talks are Carl Anthony Towns did say, yes, he would be honored. And yes, he did say it exactly as such, that he would be honored to play for the Minnesota Timberwolves. So, if that's the case, that's wonderful to know. <laughs> Thank God. Ultimately, it all depends on Flip here. I do think Jalil Okafor would suit up for the Timberwolves and he would not be the next Steve Francis or, or God knows who else. Steve Francis, that was the, I mean, the, he really screwed the Grizzlies in that one, making that big attitude, crying about it, and then what did the what did the Grizzlies wind up with? A couple of decent, decent to okay role players, but then again, ah, Steve Francis is a coca, is a crack addict anyway, so whatever, right? Okay, that's mean. Too soon? I apologize. I apologize. Steve Francis, though, was disappointing for what he was supposed to be, <laughs> to be quite honest. Talk star Flip Saunders is still leaning towards Jalil Okafor and on the Dan Barrero show this past week after a nice long extensive conversation he said I would know who I would take if the draft was today yes he would he he would he knows who he would pick if it was today but that reserves the uh, possibility of change because well we got about a month to go for the draft about 25 days to go so Christmas 2.0 is still a good four weeks away that's good hopefully the Wolves uh Really, truly pick the right guy here, regardless of which one that guy truly is. Ugh, I know it's a bunch of hypotheticals and a bunch of what ifs and a bunch of possibilities, and uh, yeah, it's going to be very interesting indeed. Timberwolves also have the 31 and 36 picks in the draft as well. Top pick in the second round, and then again, five, five picks later, or excuse me, six picks later into the second round. I'm not against keeping them at all. I'm not against keeping them at all because you can get very valuable players, especially with that top pick in the second round, and you don't have to guarantee them a contract if they are ultimately not the answer. But if they are a nice pick, great. Hopefully it does work out. Last time the Minnesota Timberwolves held the number one pick in the second round, it was Nikola Pekovic, who turned out to be pretty good before ankle injuries have been kind of catching up with him. And then the reason he slipped into that uh, second round in the first place was because he was a European who was stuck under contract for another two years. So you got to wait in order to get him, and the Wolves did that, and they got him. So there you go. Good on you. <laughs> also of note, Nikola Pekovic, the most senior member on the roster for the Minnesota Timberwolves going into next season, which is quite interesting to think about. In fact, well, I think he was the most senior member anyway. In fact, he was. So, yeah. <laughs> Rock and roll there. Looking forward to seeing what those picks could be. Do you trade up and try to get Tyus Jones from Duke and, of course, Apple Valley? Hmm. Well, again, you got Ricky Rubio already on the roster. Tyus Jones, though, might ultimately be just a really good, a really good backup six-man type of point guard anyway. Ultimately, maybe that's, maybe that's who he's going to be, or maybe he's got a higher ceiling later on and they'll have to make a decision in a couple years. We'll see. I mean, the Timberwolves don't really officially have a legitimate backup point guard on the roster. So something's going to happen, uh, unless, again, you do believe that Lorenzo Brown is a capable backup point guard. I do believe he is, uh, but I'm not convinced the Timberwolves believe he is because his playing time was extremely diminished last season, and you saw Zach Levine play most of the backup point guard minutes last season. So 
Uh huh. We're just gonna have to wait and see. A- after, excuse me, after Mo Williams was traded. <laughs> but then again, Mo Williams started most of the time he was here because Rubio was hurt. Yeah, bounce, he bounce, right? <laughs> I'm bouncing all over the place, aren't I? Well, do you blame me? Eh. Well, nobody's saying the Wolves are taking D'Angelo Russell. It seems like it's all about Philadelphia, 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 Philadelphia. No one has the Lakers taking him either. It's just Towns Okafer, Towns Okafer, Towns Okafer. Marcus the Forecaster, maybe not the most happy guy in the world to see that, but hey, maybe you can't go wrong in any of these three guys. I hope not. Hopefully it's another fantastic draft and you get top 50 players of all time here in the top three. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> you never know. Maybe maybe, uh, maybe one of the other guys in the top 10 or the top 15 here of this draft winds up being a Hall of Famer and not one of the three guys here. Uh, that's the hard part. It, it really is tough. Oh, man. It's it's tough. I'm, let's see what some other people are saying out there. If it would just... Here we go. Uh-huh. Wow. Three people are taking... Yeah. So... Yeah, it's starting to change. For the longest time, it was always Carl Anthony Towns for the Timberwolves. It's changing to Jaleel Okafor on a lot of them now. That's, I guess that's the vibe people are getting. All these, you know, insiders and these, uh, well, these old-fashioned reporters, you know, old, doing old-fashioned reporting by digging deep and finding out information, what people are saying and, and uh, in the back channels and such. Basketball Insiders, that's a website that some of you have heard of and some of you haven't, or Insider Sports. Joe Brigham said, Joel Brigham is the only out of, only one out of these four guys saying the Wolves take Carl Anthony Towns. And zero, repeat, zero of these guys have either of the Wolves or the Lakers taking D'Angelo Russell. So I guess it's between the two big men. Steve Kyer as Jalil Okafer, Alex Kennedy, Jalil Okafer, Moke Hamilton, or is it Moke Hamilton? I'm not sure. Taking it. That's probably is Moke Hamilton. Taking Jalil Okafer. So... Three out of four there, and two out of three on CBS Sports. Yeah, it's starting to lean towards Jaleel Okafer. Hmm. Huh. Well, just get it right, guys. That's about all there is to say about that one. As I've said in the past, again, and other people have said about Carl Anthony Towns, possibly higher ceiling. Obviously, the defense way, way better. And, okay, some players out there, this is one take i got to mention right here, right now. How many players how many players can you name that came into the NBA with defensive questions and then they played a couple years and clearly those defensive questions were evident? How many times in the past have those players truly made strides to improve their defense to becoming an actual really good defender? Not many. Not many. There are some. There are some players out there that have improved their defense over the course of time but not many. And, okay, I, I hear the thing about uh, Pekovic isn't really a horrible defender. He's just not a weak side defender, and he doesn't block shots. Well, he still gets his ass kicked quite often in the lane when guys are driving to the basket. So, uh, he's a good man-up defender, but he certainly, his weak side defense sucks. Completely sucks. And I think Carl uh, Anthony Towns would provide a much, much better <laughs> option in those positions. I'm surprised. I'm kind of surprised and disappointed with the lack of block shots from Gorgie Zhang. Though sometimes he'll pull up, sometimes he'll get four blocks, and sometimes he'll just get one or zero. And over the course of 35 minutes, so I I don't know. I kind of expected more in the shot blocking category from uh, Mister Mister uh, Gorgie Zhang. Mm-mm-mm. We'll just we're just again gonna have to wait and see. And of course, regardless, if you take D'Angelo Russell, Carl Anthony Towns, or Julie Okafor. <laughs> Either Pekovic or Rubio is going to wind up getting traded or bought out or something. Bought out possibly in Pekovic, but mm, probably not anytime soon. <laughs> Hopefully you can get a trade for Pekovic and maybe he can stay healthy and he's a, the best big man back up in the history of basketball. Who, who knows? Who knows what's going to happen to that? I've probably drug this a little too far and I do apologize. Let's end segment number one and let's talk about the NBA Finals right after this. shop on Amazon? Did you know that you can support this podcast just by doing your normal shopping on Amazon? It's really easy to do. Just go to thesportstuff.com and click on one of the many 
Amazon Pictures. Do your normal shopping, and Amazon sees that we referred you, and they give us a percentage. We'd like to thank you in advance for supporting the sportsstuff.com, and please use our Amazon link. Now enjoy the rest of the show. We are going Well, it's down to LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers, Steph Curry, and the Golden State Warriors in the NBA Finals. Who saw this coming? Well, probably most of us, but hey, do enjoy, because this is going to be one hell of a series. And we are back on Timberwolves Explosion, segment number two. Time for some league talk, and of course the NBA Finals, NBA Playoffs. Let's jump into some league news first, if, if that's okay with you out there. I hope it's okay. Kevin Love, that's a name we're all very familiar with in this town. He will be suiting up for the Cleveland Cavaliers, so so says him anyway. He says, I truly ex- expect to be suiting up for Game 1. So we'll see. Ultimately, Love can opt out of his contract for the 2015-2016 season, but he can also opt in. And some people are now expecting that he will do that because of the salary cap increase. That's why LeBron James signed for... Two seasons. Only two, which is like, only two? If he wants to play the rest of his career in Cleveland, well, ultimately that's because the the probability that the uh, salary cap will go way up, so we could be t- looking at massive, a uh, massive contract uh, and a price hike for both LeBron James, maybe Kevin Love, if he wants to go to the LA Lakers or stay with the Cleveland Cavaliers. That could be a big problem, though. Um, for the Cleveland Cavaliers, but let's let them worry about that, and if they wind up with at least one championship out of it, hey, you know what? That's still one more than most of our teams here in Minnesota have. We would be dying for that championship, regardless if we run into salary cap problems the next year, uh, and of course, when the Minnesota Twins won the World Series in 91, they ran into salary problems. They couldn't re-sign Jack Morris. That really sucked, and of course, the 87 Twins couldn't uh, couldn't <laughs> keep uh Frank Viola either. He wanted a huge, or he was going to get, like it or not, going to get a massive contract somewhere because he was the Cy Young winner in 1988. So, yeah, that's a little old news, and I do apologize. But then again, that's how it goes, though. We still got a championship out of it, though. We can still hang our hat on that, right? Being able to hang your hat on a championship feels pretty damn good, even though if you were able to keep Jack Morris and and or uh, Frank Viola back in 87, even more than Jack Morris, Twins might have won two more World Series out of it. They could have won four championships. Holy cow. Very possible, they're quite honest. Um, coaching carousel, coaching carousel. Uh, okay, I'll get to the uh, less uh, less uh, intriguing, less uh, enticing one for the uh, New Orleans Pelicans. Yeah, they're a nice defensive team, aggressive, talented team. Team on the rise, right? And they bring in Alvin Gentry. That's nice. Elvin Gentry. <laughs> Elvin Gentry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Elvin Gentry. So I guess all that defense and stuff is going to go right out the window because Elvin Gentry, yeah, he's about as defensive-minded as Mike Antony. Okay, Mike D'Antoni. <laughs> I remember I used to call him Mike D'Antoni, which probably annoyed the hell out of Vince Germano and others, but yeah, Mike D'Antoni. He's about as defensive-minded as him. Uh, he had some success in Phoenix with that offense-only approach. He was the top assistant with the, well, still is the top assistant because they're still playing with the Golden State Warriors. And ultimately, I guess Brian Shaw is interested in replacing Alvin Gentry as the Warriors associate head coach. Good luck to him, ultimately. Um, that would be nice for Brian Shaw, I suppose, especially after getting fired from Denver. That didn't feel too good. Just go back to assistant coaching, see where things go from there. The <laughs> Yeah, well, as expected, Tom Thibodeau has been fired from the Chicago Bulls, and apparently they put him under the bus about as much as uh, you could possibly put a coach under the bus, difficult to work with, ran the players into the ground, all that good stuff, which is leading a lot of people to say that they don't want him in Minnesota, where a lot of other of us out there are saying, we would really like to have Tom Thibodeau here because we need to play deep, we need to, we need to get defense in here like we need to breathe. And a defensive-minded coach who is the best defensive-minded coach in the NBA would be a nice addition to this franchise. Uh, And uh, both of these have Timberwolves implications here. There's two coaches with the Chicago Bulls, one former and very likely one future, that could be very damning to the Timberwolves if we wind up with neither one. 
And I mean really damning. Because I do think the Minnesota Timberwolves were really hoping, including Flip Saunders, of course, were hoping that Fred Hoiberg would ultimately come to Minnesota. He would kind of come to his senses and say, you know what, I'm, I'm ready to go to the NBA. And a lot of people figured he would eventually leave Iowa State to come to the NBA to be a head coach. The Chicago Bulls have offered Fred Hoiberg a $25 million deal. Five-year, $25 million, and apparently they've already agreed on it. And it's not been announced or anything, but you know how you, you know how it goes, and there's already deals in place. They're already pretty much pretty close. Like, if it's not official, they're pretty much there. And you know how people get into the back channels and all that. Well, there goes Fred Hoiberg. That really sucks. And that's why they fired Tom Thibodeau. Well, partially. They hated him, apparently. Apparently they hated him. <laughs> uh, the players, according to most people, didn't hate him. But, well, the, the the organization pretty much wants him to die. But then again, they pretty much want every head coach that's had any success in Chicago to die. It seems like it. Oh, Phil Jackson. Yeah, we have Phil Jackson here. Uh, what an asshole, you know. What an asshole. He only brought us six championships, that's all. Asshole. Gosh, he just... What, what, what does he do? Get in the elevator backwards or something? I I don't know. Or he's not constantly saying, Oh, Jerry Krause. Oh, Jerry Reinsdorf. Oh, my God. I, you are the greatest owner and general manager in the history of sports. Oh, I'm just so lucky to be here in Chicago. Oh, my God. Oh. It had nothing to do with Portland being dumb. And, well, Houston going with the big man and passing on the uh, slightly better player in the 84 draft, the, the greatest draft. Ever, apparently. According to most people, 96 is pretty good too. Um, But for him to not bow down at their feet and say, I'm just the luckiest coach in the history of the world. I should be an assistant coach in any other staff. I'm just along for the ride. (laughs) Uh, Which which Dave Blatt may very well be this year in Cleveland. Congratulations to him anyway, though. Eastern Conference ring at minimum. Um, (laughs) they, they They just couldn't keep him around, man. He just, he just... Oh, he's an asshole. He's just, he's too, he's too arrogant or something, whatever it is. And uh, I, I don't know. Uh, Chicago, this should be a sign for Fred Hoiberg and others. Chicago does not know how to treat coaches or star players very well, do they? I don't know. <laughs> not impressed with the history of the Chicago Bulls. I've not been a big fan for quite a while. Ever, you know, I mean, f- forcing off Phil Jackson, Scottie Pippen, and Michael Jordan. Doesn't, doesn't really reflect well, and haven't really been a fan of that franchise ever since. Congratulations, Jerry Reinsdorf, <laughs> in that category. That does turn the attention to Tom Thibodeau. Is he a potential coach of the future for the Timberwolves? Flip Saunders talked about, well, of course, there's a relationship there, and yes, I'm sure there's interest in uh, reporters from Chicago. Some believe Tom Thibodeau would love to come here, and it would, he would just absolutely love it as long as he's offered the job and all that. Flip Saunders said basically Tom Thibodeau might prefer to go to a team that's ready to win now rather than come to a uh, more of a project even though it's getting better. You know, it's not a dream job here yet, but it's getting better. It's getting more attractive. It's not, you're not, you know, <laughs> this isn't quicksand anymore, which just a year ago before acquiring uh, Andrew Wiggins, it was a pretty scary looking situation, quite frankly. You had a star player who didn't want to be here anymore and you had no idea what you were going to wind up with him. Now it's looking a lot better. Okay, well, there it is. There's your league talk. Quite a bit of league talk, and yes, there were definite Wolves implications there. In fact, two of them with Freddie Hoiberg, who was our potential coach in waiting, who is no longer our coach in waiting, I guess, and maybe Tom Thibodeau, a bigger name, who could ultimately wind up here or so. We would definitely like to believe. Oh, man. So how much longer do we got to wait for the NBA Finals to start? Well... This upcoming Thursday, June the 4th, is when the NBA Finals will start. Unfortunately, like every other series, because they happen to win 67 games, <laughs> you know, you kind of probably have home court advantage, and the Golden State Warriors indeed do have home court advantage coming into this one. I'll wrap things up here. Um, Houston just shat the bed in Game 3. I already talked about that before on the last show. Nothing really to say about that one. They blew it in two games in, in Oracle Arena. Two very winnable games. They blew it, especially that second one. But even the first one, they were winning for quite a while there. And they just coughed it up and blew it. They blew an opportunity to steal one in Oracle. And ultimately, they wind up losing that series in five games because they were able to save face winning a fourth, winning game four. 
playing great basketball, but then game five, you could just feel it. It was pretty similar to what uh, game four started becoming for the uh, Atlanta Hawks in the Eastern Conference Finals with the Cleveland Cavaliers with no Kevin Love and no Kyrie Irving. Got the job done and finished that series in a sweep. That team is definitely on a mission, and they absolutely, positively deserve to win the Eastern Conference Championship this year. Clearly the best team in the East. J.R. Smith clutch with his three-point shooting. LeBron James is good as ever. Uh, you know, just awesome. Not as explosive, but hey, when Jordan wasn't ex- as explosive either in 93 as he was back in 89, I'll tell you that. <laughs> but he'll take 93 over 89 because he got a championship. Doggone it. In fact, his third in a row. Maybe LeBron will get his third this year at age 30 or 31 or whatever it is. He's right about the same age as Michael was when he got his third. So maybe it will happen indeed. We shall see. Yes. My ultimate prediction in this series. You kind of factor in the fact. They <laughs> factor in the fact. Huh? The Golden State Warriors have been great at home mo- during the regular season, but they've appeared semi-beatable at home. Now when they're in an, an elimination situation... They just stick the knife in and finish the job, and good on them for that. That's what they—that's what good teams do, especially when you're able to scorch the net from downtown to the level that the Warriors do. Because in an elimination game, when you're not going to team out and you're making threes, it's game over, man. It's game over. How, how how often do a lot of NBA finals end or a lot of series end in an elimination game? Is one of, is that one team that's winning the series gets really hot from three point range and they just bury you? And well. The, <laughs> The Miami Heat, excuse me, what am I calling them that far? The Cleveland Cavaliers, almost still stuck in the heat here. Cleveland Cavaliers better not go to Game 7, I'll tell you. Don't go to Game 7 in Oracle Arena. The Warriors will win the series in 7, without a doubt, if it reaches that point. This comes to the other point, the other side of the the coin here. Cleveland Cavaliers and LeBron James are by far the best road team in the postseason. By a mile. LeBron James' road record in the postseason has been phenomenal. For quite a while, and this this season has been ridiculous. <sighs> That's why I think the Cleveland Cavaliers are going to steal one game in Oracle Arena. I think LeBron James is going to have a really big game. Tristan Thompson, not Clay Thompson. Again, that's another factor here. The Thompsons. Huh. Tristan Thompson's rebounding is going to be extremely key for the success of the Cleveland Cavaliers. Clay Thompson's apparent concussion, where well, that drew that drew vomiting. <laughs> is going to be a huge problem for the Golden State Warriors if he's not healthy. If he's not healthy, there's no way they're going to win the... There's no way the uh, Warriors are going to win. Okay, maybe I'm crazy. And maybe ultimately it'll all go to uh, Mr. Steph Curry. He'll just score 50 points and it'll all be okay. And you have a guy like Draymond Green who's phenomenal. Energy, aggressiveness, defense. Just an awesome player. you got to love him. But uh, I do think the Le- I do think LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers win this series in six. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be quite a battle. You're gonna see some close games, and you might see an ugly one or two. Unfortunately, I think the the, the Warriors win maybe an ugly one or two in this one. But if you see the Cleveland Cavaliers roll into Oracle in Game One and and, and take Game One, Cavs are gonna you know you, you can really get the vibe the Cavs are gonna win this series, <laughs> the, this series in the NBA championship this year. And finally, the city of Cleveland will have a championship again for the first time since the 1960s of the Cleveland Browns, way back in the day. <laughs> will the city of Cleveland finally have it, or will it be yet again another situation where your team is just cursed, and your, your city's cursed from winning championships? Will that be the case, or will the fact that they have a different version of LeBron James, will that be the factor here in this series? Right now, that's what I see happening. It's also crazy. You have two rookie coaches. Again, you have two franchises, well, who have (laughs) not been to the NBA Finals very much. The Cavaliers have been once, and the uh, Warriors have been twice. The Warriors have last, the Warriors last made it to the Finals. Actually, no, the Warriors only went once. Pardon me. They lost the Conference Finals in uh, 76. Excuse me. The Warriors have only been there once as well, and they won it in 1975. Warriors are 1-0 in their history. The Cavaliers are 0-1 in their history, when they lost in 2007 to the dynasty San Antonio Spurs. But I do think the Cavaliers and LeBron James are on a mission, and I think they get this done this year in six games. They win it in six. 
The Cavs lead 3-2 to two going into Game 6. They will absolutely win the championship this season. If they blew, if they somehow blow Game 6 at home, they're dead. <laughs> they're dead. And if they're trailing 3 games to 2, they're also dead, unfortunately, I think. I think they'd maybe win, win Game 6 and force Game 7. Maybe the Warriors scorch the Nets in Game 6 and finish it off. But uh, the Cavs need to win in Game 6, though. You can't go into Oracle for Game 7. Otherwise, they will, uh, the, uh, the, uh, Golden State Warriors will pull it off and win. But that's where I'm standing with right now. The Cavaliers are, are apparently they're on a mission, and you can totally see it. LeBron James clutch ability attacking the basket. That's going to win the day, in my opinion. And if Clay Thompson has concussion issues, that's going to really, really be a factor in this <laughs> in this NBA final series. Ultimately, Steph Curry obviously the key of keys for the Warriors, especially if Clay Thompson's hurt. LeBron James the key of keys for the Cleveland Cavaliers. You got the two best players in basketball right now going at it. The only other one is James Harden, and he did not look good against the Warriors. So we'll see. I think the Warriors. Excuse me. I think the yeah. I think the Warriors' defense will not be as good on LeBron James as it was on James Harden. Harden has never won a championship. LeBron has really, really. Uh, LeBron has won titles, and his physical strength and his clutch ability has definitely taken charge of the NBA the last several years, and again, five straight NBA Finals appearances, that goes all the way back to Byron, uh, Byron Russell, what am I talking about? <laughs> Bill Russell, oh, that's terrible, sorry about that, Bill, yeah, an amazing career it was for him, and it's been a long time since you had a guy with such dominance getting to the Finals that many times, unfortunately for him, not the same team. There it is, Cavs and Six, we'll be back for the Fan Direction segment and wrap up this episode and I'll send you off for State of the Timberwolves 2015. We'll be back right after this. And we are back here on Timberwolves Explosion. Segment number three, Fan Interaction. This will probably be fairly brief. To get there, simply go to the fa- go to Facebook. Obviously, go to the search bar. Type in Timberwolves Explosion, Minnesota Timberwolves Show. Click on the one that says Company, not Group. Company, not Group. Then click Like, and you're ready to rock and roll. We also do have a phone line. It is 209-736-7877. 209-736-7877. So we'll get back to that in a second. Brent Jacobson on Facebook was saying, Tom Thibodeau was just fired by the Chicago Bulls today. Do you want the Wolves to hire him or pass him? Would his style fit the Wolves' young players, or would it stifle them? Um, well, I would. I would hire him if possible. That would be nice. <laughs> I think he would be a pretty good hire. The Wolves could use him defensive approach. The whole fear becomes, it, does he run his players into the ground? That's the one thing that a lot of people don't like about him, that, that, that he does that. He does, he does overwork his players a bit. Um, also, would he be too impatient with the young guys? That's another thing, because, well, there's a lot of young guys here. Hopefully he's not another Rick Adelman where he's just impatient and he just runs people all over the place. Maybe for the time being, Flip Saunders is the right coach. For the time being. Just to kind of, you know, get the Wolves through the young, the the baby stage. The baby stages with some of these guys. And then hopefully you can get a Dave Yeager type of guy. He was, who's young and, and energetic and ready to rock and roll. Not sure what's going to happen with this. Um... More indications would, would be that Tom Thibodeau is probably not on his way here, according to Flip Saunders. But, who knows? Again, who knows? Is he willing to come here and ha- have some fun and develop the young guys and maybe become a, a bit of a hero on the coaching side of things, watching this team get to 55-60 wins? And then, hopefully, we go from there to something bigger and much better. That would be very, very nice indeed. Uh... Tanae Brown out of New Zealand. Now, Brent Jacobson's out of the Lakeville area here in Minnesota. So, yep, there are people from the Twin Cities that listen to this show. Thank thank God. I'm glad that there are people from town that do listen to this show. But, again, I obviously <laughs> appreciate everybody, each and every one of you, regardless where you're from. Really love you Australians and, and uh, Tanae Brown from New Zealand and maybe others from New Zealand that listen to this show. God bless you. Thank you very, very much. He says, I've been... Um, Who's this? McLean? Okay. It's, uh, he posted an article where they were saying, I've been doing this for 11 or 12 years pre-draft. McLean, the leading scorer in the Pac-12, and UCL history told SNY-TV 
because I had a lot of top 10 picks and a lot of really good players and not really in- impressed or blown away. Yep, I had Towns all last week and I was blown away. Blown away. He, he said it twice. That wasn't me repeating it. He said it twice. <laughs> Thoughts? And does him not working out with the Wolves hurt his chances of being drafted by the Wolves? <sighs> it doesn't help today. It really doesn't because the flip is really, really, really uber sold on on um, Jaleel Okafor. Well, we need Towns to show Flip what he can do. We need Towns to prove to him that, uh, to prove to Flip, that is, to that uh, he truly is worthy of the number one pick and he really is the franchise player of the future. It would be nice. Uh, apparently, Carl Anthony Towns will not work out for any NBA teams. I don't understand. Uh, I wish guys wouldn't do this. Uh, but that's kind of how it goes sometimes. I don't know if he's trying to avoid injury or what the deal is, or he just figures I'll go number one or two either way. Who cares? What's the point? I don't need to go work out for the Sacramento Kings or picking sixth. The odds of them trading up for number one, very slim, and they'd have to give up the farm. And you know what? Even if they did give up the farm, it would have to be one hell of a farm because, you know, do you really want just a bunch of pieces or do you want a franchise guy or a secondary franchise guy? Would be. I would, I would take the latter, without a doubt. Danae Brown wrapping up the Facebook very quickly. But I know we probably won't be getting a new coach for next season, even with Tibbs on the market now. But what would you think of giving someone like Ettore Messina a go? Hmm. Who? No. <laughs> He's got a fairly impressive resume, in my opinion. Doesn't have head coaching experience in the NBA, but he was an assistant coach for the San Antonio Spurs this year. And a few years back, he was a consultant for the Lakers. Sounds like another David Blatt, I suppose. <laughs> I mean, better than nothing. And David Blatt was brought into Cleveland originally with the thoughts of developing a young group of players with Andrew Wiggins leading the way. Hmm, that does sound familiar. Doesn't necessarily mean it was the right decision, but it doesn't mean it's the wrong one either. Tanae Brown also showing the uh, YouTube video of Messina on his basketball philosophies. Hank saying no, and then LMAO laughing my ass off. He thinks it's a joke, apparently. And today saying, or what about international coaches? Would there be any that you'd give a contract to? Right now, I can't say. Uh, to be quite honest, I, I, I need to do more research on that topic. Um, I'm not poo-pooing it, but I don't know. It's easier said than done. Uh, David Blatt doesn't seem to be the greatest coach ever. LeBron doesn't seem to be all in on him, but then again, that doesn't mean that doesn't mean he would be the wrong coach for this team. Maybe the wrong coach for a team like like the Cavaliers, or almost like a L.A. Lakers situation, where they're like you know, you know, when the L.A. Lakers were good anyway, when they're on the verge of like winning a championship, you probably don't want a guy like that. Uh, luckily for the Miami Heat, Eric Spolstra was up to the task. It, it took a little. It took about a year and a half, but once Spolstra really started to dig his teeth into that franchise and show what he could do, really dug in and showed what he was about in his defensive approach and the fact that he wasn't intimidated by Dwayne Wade or anybody else, that's when you know you got yourself uh, a coach. And hopefully, for Dave Blatt's sake, he will do that. David, Dave, Dave, whatever it is, David Blatt's sake, uh, he will do the same with LeBron James and uh, Kyrie Irving over there in Cleveland land. (laughs) We'll see what happens. But again, I need to do more research tonight. My schedule sucks really bad right now, and it's worse than normal. I'm just exhausted. <laughs> Usually the lawns don't kill me this much, but again, May, this May has been as rainy as it gets, and June sometimes is bad too. So, uh, well, I'm going to do what I can. Got to do some more research. Um, I'm able to try to bring you an entertaining product, and I do, do, I do research on a lot of things, but I don't tend to look into international coaching, unfortunately, but maybe I can do more. Um, I do apologize for that. Let's get to Twitter and wrap up this segment and this show. Isabella Trent B. on Facebook says, You want the Rockets to win? I hate them. Oh, I don't like the Cavs either, but LeBron is better than stupid Howard or Harden. (laughs) I agree that he's better than them. Yeah, and Howard and Harden. Yeah, no. (laughs) I I don't know. I guess she likes the Warriors. I guess. (laughs) She's originally from Kansas and currently resides in Portland. So, gold trailblazers, I suppose. Go Jail Blazers, right? No, I'm kidding. No, that's one of my least favorite teams out there. But, eh, you know, she's a listener to the show, an occasional listener uh, from what I remember. And um, hopefully, ultimately, she's listening right now. And shout out to you. Thank you again for listening. 
Jared Johnson making a return. Thank you very much. And um, yeah, I think he does listen. It sounds like he does. And he said, you must be loving the fact the Warriors are struggling. And his, his Twitter, if you want to follow him, is at, as long as he doesn't mind me doing this, at J underscore smooth 236. He says, you must be loving the fact the Warriors are struggling. Yeah, because they were, they were struggling in game four, but it's like you figure it's just one game. And they were up by three games. So it's like, eh, you know, it shows that they're beatable at times. There, there's a chance you might be able to beat them. The Warriors were much more beatable, though, at home, which is crazy. <laughs> they were really beatable in games one and two, and the Rockets did not seize it. I think Cleveland would seize it and would win, would win both of those games. I, I do. I, I think Cleveland would win both of those games. <laughs> You're not going to tie up LeBron James the way they tied up uh, James Harden, who I would say is definitely, okay, <laughs> uh, is on the side. So- I think Harden at times is on the soft side. <gasps> did I say that? I did. I did. James Harden's a little bit soft at times, at times. LeBron James is everything but soft. He's as tough as it gets. Tough as nuts, tough as nails, whatever they say in Australia. Um, ultimately, yeah, that was the other thing. <laughs> I'll get back to that too here. I probably could have talked about it more in the when I was talking about the finals, but okay, I'm going crazy. Um, but yeah, LeBron had his struggles early on in his career. And yes, he's not 6-0 in the finals like Michael Jordan. He's 2-2. Two and two. No, 2-3, two and three, pardon me, in the finals. He's 2-3 and three in the finals and he needs to win this one to even up that record. That's not Michael Jordan. I got it. And I've never, ever said LeBron James is better than Michael Jordan. But I think he's the best player in the game right now. And I hope... And and, and again, also, ever since he lost the 2012, 2013, 2001... I can't talk. 2011 finals, pardon me, with the Miami Heat. After that, during the postseason of 2012... LeBron changed. It took a long time, and it took longer than it should have, but he did change. And if you go off that point, he's been significantly better in the postseason since 2012. Of course, yes, he did lose last year in 2014, and they got stomped by the Spurs, (laughs) kind of similar to the Cleveland series in 2007, but hey, he's been pretty, uh, other than that, other than that, Mrs. Lincoln, how was the play? But no, (laughs) but other other than that, he's been pretty damn good in the postseason ever since 2012. Uh, Jared Johnson and I were talking a bit about how, why in the hell are the Golden State Warriors having Steph Curry in, in Game 4 when, you know what, even if you lose Game 4, so what? Just just bite that one game, you're going back home for Game 5, let Steph Curry heal. Why are you risking the possibility that Steph Curry could have had a concussion there? And keeping him out there playing, especially with that air ball, when he's doing his normal motion, shooting the ball and everything, and he's putting up an air ball, didn't look good. But luckily for him, it wasn't a concussion. Could you imagine if both Curry and, and, and Thompson, Clay Thompson, were concussed? Bye bye, Warriors. You ain't Warriors no more. <laughs> Even though they have a lot of depth and a lot of good players, that would be a very, a very, very tough situation for the Warriors ultimately. And Jerry Johnson saying agreed about uh, that it was a scary fall and that they should leave him out until game five. He says agreed. Yeah, without a doubt. Without a doubt. Um, yeah, Curry's fall where he landed on his head and everything, that could have, well, it ended up being his neck more than his head. The whiplash could have been the concussion, not the fact that his head didn't yeah, smash into the ground. I mean, if it smashed into the ground, yeah, that could have been a concussion too. But I think it could have been a uh, concussion with a whiplash, which, you know, the impact of that landing. But luckily for him, he's okay. It was just kind of a bruise. <laughs> That probably hurt, I'm sure, but good on him. He played very well in game game uh, five, so there it is. That's it. <laughs> I'm going to still pick the Cavs in six, and it's not just because I don't like the Warriors. It's because the Cavaliers are they're a good road team, and they're, well, they're the only team that could beat the Warriors, apparently, and you know what? They are the most likely team that would beat the Warriors this season, from what we can tell at this point in time. Will they? Who knows? <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised at all if the Warriors go on and win this series. But right now I'm going to pick the Cavs. Like what I'm seeing, we'll see what happens. Until next episode, State of the Timberwolves. Will, yeah, it'll likely be State of the Timberwolves 2015, most likely. And I better get this posted up there now. Get ready on there, guys. Those of you that post on the Facebook page, please post on the thread I'm going to put up there. I would like to have your uh, Minnesota Timberwolves 
for the 2014-2015 most viable player. Uh, biggest surprise, biggest disappointment, and biggest surprise in that order. So I'm going to put that up there. Please list your MVP, biggest disappointment, and biggest surprise, and briefly say why. Hopefully we can get a decent number of comments up there. It only helps the show, and that's what we do every year in State of the Timberwolves. We talk about the season and all that. So would be very, very appreciated. We'll also talk more about the draft, because it'll probably be right before the draft. That's usually about... When I release State of the Team Rules is right before the draft. That tends to get the best uh, listenership as well. People are very, very excited about the NBA that week. And um, it's only uh, more fun for those of you out there that are NBA fans. You probably want the show then more than July 15th. And sometimes I will release a show on July 15th to talk about free agency. So I still will be doing that. But I'd rather have State of the Team Rules earlier like I just said. So, thanks again for listening. God bless you. Please rate Timberwolves Explosion on iTunes. It'd be greatly appreciated. Give it a one, or what am I talking about? Give it a five, a four, or three star rating. That would be greatly appreciated. Three stars isn't very good, but it's better than nothing, and at least you're acknowledging the show, and you and you like it a little bit. <laughs> Giving it one or two stars is, in my mind, I think you're trolling. There's no way this show is a one star show. Maybe sometimes I'm a little tired and I'm not as on my game every single show as I should be. (laughs) But I'm going to keep releasing this show as much as I can. I'm going to keep doing the best I can. I love the game. I know the game. And I'm not afraid to debate the game with you out there if you might not agree with everything I say. I like the way LeBron James plays differently (laughs) than Steph Curry. I prefer LeBron James' style than Steph Curry's style in the NBA. That's just how I am. Sorry. That's just how I am. And a lot of people love Steph Curry right now, and he's he's earning it. But I'm more of a fan of LeBron James than I am of Steph Curry. That's all. No hate. No hate necessary. I'm not afraid to say when I do hate somebody or something out there. I'm not afraid of that at all. But I don't hate Steph Curry. I just prefer LeBron James. So, again, thank you in advance. For those of you that would be kind enough to review the show on iTunes, I will give you a shout out and a big fat thank you <laughs> on the show when you do that. So again, thanks in advance for that. Thank you again for your listenership and please tell a friend if you could. If you know somebody out there, maybe you haven't told them yet or something, maybe you're new to the show and you know a few people that might be interested in it, bring them on board, baby. I could. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> the more the merrier. It's greatly appreciated. Thanks again everybody for listening. I've drugged this out too far. Take care, everybody. We'll be back soon.